A programme to establish the effect of proven beef genetics on dairy farms was set up by Beef and Lamb New Zealand in conjunction with Ag Research. Doug Lynham is on the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Farmer Council for the Mid-Northern Region and the manager of the five-year-long project that is already showing some very clear advantages. The background for this project goes back quite a bit, actually. The beef population in New Zealand is diminishing, the dairy population is growing, and yet we've got a demand for prime beef. So how do we get talking with the dairy industry to get an opportunity to put proven beef size across their cows? As a Beef and Sheep Council, we feel that we've, uh, we've earned the right to develop this project and go and search of, and prove to people that proven beef sires do not damage cows. They will deliver a calf, and they'll deliver a calf that's a little bit lighter in weight at birth, easy calving, proven for that. But it will also, there are beef, beef bulls out there today that have short gestation. That means the dairy cow comes over the bucket six, seven, eight days earlier than normal, so there's more milk in the bucket for the dairy farmer. Instead of putting the bobby calf down the road at $40 or thereabouts, he's got a chance to earn $120 for that beef calf and at four days of age. So out the gate it goes, he doesn't have to feed it for long, and there's more money in his pocket. There's a very big lease bull industry out there where people just lease a bull, do the job and get rid of it without thinking what they could actually add to their bottom line. And I think when the milk price was eight and a half dollars, nobody thought about the calf or the beef. Now it's a different story. At four and a half dollars or less, people are thinking, how can I get more out of my enterprise? We set up a trial through AgriSearch Farm, so we mated the bottom quarter in terms of breeding worth of the dairy cows to Easy Carve Hereford beef semen. And then with natural mating, we used a mixture of Easy Carve, Easy Carve sires and some unproven Hereford bulls as well. So then we've followed them through and we've looked at how that's affected calving ease and then we've measured their live weight basically from their birth weights right through calf wearing uh, every week and then through the finishing period right to slaughter every month or couple of months. We've looked at feed quality as well. We take pasture samples from where they're going to graze and look at the energy content and protein content. All the treatments are grazed in one group, so they all get the same feed. In terms of calving ease, we've shown that the Easy Carve Herefords were really good. We had one that had assisted calving, but that was for a breech birth, which isn't associated with the genetics. Whereas the Herefords that we had no genetic information, no breeding values for, we had 4% of the animals born from those size uh, required assisted calvings. Um, so we ended up with the easy calf side calves were slightly smaller at birth, about three to three and a half kilos on average. But uh, as we read them, they took just as long to reach that 100 kilo mark as the other side calves. And the same, uh, just to early results, looks as though we're getting the same thing through finishing. So despite you're getting a smaller calf at birth, it has no impact, no negative impact on its growth through to finishing. The AI side calves are obviously born earlier, so you're getting a calf on the ground earlier. It's reaching the 100 kilo mark earlier, so there's more potential for finishing it earlier before that second winter as well. And the good thing about this is the beef size we used, the semen was actually 20% cheaper than the dairy semen. So if you can select your cows that you don't want to breed replacement from and use some beef semen, it's actually going to be a cost saving at mating as well. So I think there's a definite potential opportunity for many dairy farmers. We've also looked at comparing the effects of uh, straight Frisians versus crossbreds. So we've got all the information on the, um, the dam, so we can look further into that if there's any difference between them and how the offspring perform from them as well. So that's uh, to be found out later. And when you just cast your hand around here, there's a whole lot of heifers here that are on the cusp of what we're, what we're looking for. And, and they're feeding on fruit salad, aren't they? These heifers here, actually, they wintered very well. I'm surprised at, uh, at how well they've come through the winter. We've got a target weight of 220 to 245 for our heifers, and these are going to make it easily. And I'd say half these heifers are going out the gate as soon as the process of course. And of course, they're busy on um, 
on calves right now, so we're having to wait a turn a wee bit here. But everything looks to be growing just as we would want it to. This country looks well. It's coming into the spring well. We just like every other farmer want some warm temperature to get the grass really cracking. And looking at these heifers here, I would expect our steers, of which are about 90 to go this year, I would expect them to come out of the winter looking pretty well too. And the other attribute that you see here, notice how these cattle are standing right up close to us. And one of the things you get when you cross good beef animals with the dairy industry, you actually get animals that are very docile. This is easy calf Hereford and ordinary Hereford, and it's because you've got a mix of colours, it's because we had a cosmopolitan sample of the dairy herd that we used. And we did that deliberately so we could look at crosses, not just with the Friesian, not just with the Jersey, not just with the Kiwi cow. We wanted to have a mix of cows. And remember, they're all DNA profiled, so we know who's who at the zoo. And when these animals go off and get slaughtered, we can go back retrospectively and look at them in their lifetime. I think that uh, farmers can pretty much talk to breed societies and make their own choice. If they have a preference for a Hereford, an Angus, or a Simmental or whatever, um, talk to breed societies, see what they've got to offer, look at the figures. I cannot impress them on people enough. Look at the EBVs, make sure that the animal you're talking about does have EBVs for ease of calving, does have EBVs for short gestation, and then you're away. And every day extra in the shed for your cow is money in the bank. And it's as simple as this. There's a calf there that's going to the works at four days of age. It's 20 to 40, 50 dollars, whatever the price might be. Here's a calf at four days of age here that's going the other way at 120, maybe more. But that's a difference of 70 dollars. So you're selling 100 calves, 70 dollar margin. There's 7,000 dollars sitting there, and right now for a dairy farmer that would buy a lot of groceries. <laughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.